of Oninga Cafe and Other Heroic Deeds, Bible Word the Tristero, Chapter 144, Talks, Part 8. David Shield wasn't used to many things when it came to Japan and its customs. However, having his laptop, phone, and tablet all unresponsive was something that he could only attribute to being on this island, an island that didn't even have 6G when the rest of the world was running on 10G. Hmm. He wondered as he wandered through the resort just how in the world his satellites weren't making a connection. Similarly, all of the televisions and radios were down, and although he didn't want to worry anyone, he did, couldn't help but feel that something was off. Therefore, with little preamble, he'd made his way outside, his eyes peering up and into the flawless blue sky as though that would give him answers. However, just like the young men and women who the manager had sent off on their bicycles to see if their neighbors were experiencing similar trouble, the sky was clueless. Plus, according to one of the porters who'd returned, the two ferry companies had stopped running, and worse still, the airport had had to close for safety reasons as well. Heaven forbid any planes take off without any kind of communication equipment working. God, it wasn't worth thinking about. Us. But I still don't know why, he huffed to himself, his brows furrowing, not that anyone else seemed to be that concerned, thank goodness. The kids were happy to play, laugh, and make up games. The teenagers had libraries full of previously downloaded movies to watch, and most of the adults were still showering and dressing up ready for their evening banquet, which, since this was hopefully just some glitch and nothing sinister, he... Huh? Um... Turning his gaze to the top of the onsen, David felt his brows furrow when he saw something snaking down the old-fashioned antenna up there. Cocking his head to one side, his curiosity peaked. The genius was about to walk back inside to see if he could get a ladder when, uh, why, if it isn't Mr. Shield. Humming, he turned around to find Shoda and a man he vaguely recognized, his English accent flawless and his smile pleased. His former lover's husband, however, looked a little pale and was missing the ornate outer coat he was wearing earlier. Hmm. Oh, hello, he replied, a little bow, leaving him for the sake of courtesy. I'm sorry, sir, but I don't believe we've met, he added, his smile a little nervous. There was something about this man, something unsettling. It didn't help matters that the affable eatery owner seemed to be stressed and unusually reserved, either. Ah, no, my friend, you're quite right in saying so. The other nodded, his aged yet handsome face all smiles as a light breeze picked up to rustle their clothing and the heady scented chrysanthemums which swayed and jostled in its wake. However, you and your company have been working quite tirelessly with my colleague, Dr. Ujiko. Is that not so? Eyes widening, his unease dispelling... David instantly brightened and approached him with an outstretched hand. "'Yes, we have, and I must admit that I've found the whole enterprise incredibly excited. He smiled as the man met him for the shake he'd invited. "'Dr. Ujiko is an incredible man with so many interesting ideas, and I genuinely can't wait to see the results of your expedition. Do you know how much progress he's made, uh—' "'Sorry, I didn't mean to pry,' he chuckled good-naturedly. But on Earth in the Savage Lands and having access to all of those untapped natural resources, while well, this could help humanity to push past our current boundaries and finally get serious about the space program, he sighed wistfully before, with a blink, he flushed. And now I'm rambling. I also don't know your name, sir. Are you perhaps a relative of Shoda's? Oh, yes. Well, in a manner of speaking, anyway. The charming man crooned through a snicker, which made him feel as though there was a shared joke he wasn't being let in on. Call me Shigaraki, he allowed mildly, the glint in his eyes sharpening as that man started to fly large, vivid red flags in the back of his mind. Shigaraki? Shigaraki isn't... Now then, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Shield, the fiend stated as he swallowed down a gasp, his feet stepping in backwards... We were just about to say our goodbyes. Oh, and please don't mind Yakushima being cut off from the rest of civilization for the time being, all right? He murmured, his smirk curling. It's a gift, you see, from myself to the happy couple. Why, I wouldn't want my boy's wedding weekend cut short, because you know how heroes are. They do so enjoy their gallivanting off, don't they? He tittered before placing a hand on the youngest man's shoulder. Oh, Shoda. Oh, God! All for one was holding him hostage, wasn't he? This 
No! Toshi's master had had to live through such a thing and... Normal communications will resume ready for Monday, so please do tell everyone to enjoy their Sunday and... When it's time, I would dearly love to invite you and that wonderfully gifted daughter of yours to come and see the fruits of our combined labor. Oh, shit! Dr. Ujiko worked for him? He'd been working with, helping, supporting, and partially funding a villain unlike any their generation had ever seen to find one of the last great wonders of the world not to share, but to exploit? No. No, no, no. And I'm certainly hoping that you and dear Toshinori will be there standing beside me during my official address to the world on Wednesday, won't you? He crooned his tone silky smooth as he winked at him. It's only right that I give credit where credit is due, don't you think? Gasping awake, his eyes widening as he tried to rein one for all in, the newly married pro was on his feet in an instant, his eyes never ring when neither Shoda nor Shigaragi were present. Shit! Just scowling, he nearly trampled on his lover's Hayori in his haste. Quietly accosting himself, he grabbed it up and held it closed before swiftly moving to the fire exit after glancing at the sweetly fragranced tiled rim's clock still so innocently placed near the double doors which led into the kitchen proper. Seventeen-seven? That... That didn't seem possible, but right now, that really didn't matter, did it? And so, with a disgruntled huff, he made his way outside, his phone in hand, as he followed the paved snaking route which trailed from the door, his head snapping up to look around the towering swaths of bamboo that swayed elegant and carefree all around him. This walkway only seemed to slink away from the resort and towards the tree-lined driveway, at least, which meant that this had to be the way they'd taken because no windows or other doors overlooked it. Shigaraki would have felt completely at ease as he waltzed off with his husband through here. He was sure that son of a bitch! Seething, he rounded two more corners before reaching the Grand Fountain Peppered Entrance, his eyes widening when he found David sat on the short marble-fronted steps, which led to the currently unmanned reception, his head heavily resting in his hands whilst he seemed to curl in on himself. Oh, God! Dave! Zipping to the man's side, the lush foliage jerking under the force of his movement to send chrysanthemum petals scattering. The first love of his life balked at Emmy. He looked ashen. He'd been crying. Though she, though she, I, all for one, hey, it was air. The man rasped his head, shaking. I, I've been working with him. What? He gasped, his shock warring with his desperation. Ah. Me and my company, we've been helping him, and and Shota, he, Toshi, he took him down there. He said that they were, re it, it's not true. He cut in his own head shaking in denial whilst he continued to search the freshly mown lawns, artfully cropped trees, and immaculately raked Karansaisui gardens, which decorated the lead up to the resort proper. We, we'll discuss this later, but now just, just try not to panic, all right? Now where? Where do they? I'm here. Blinking, his body moving before he knew what it was doing, the number one pro stood before his lover, holding him and tentatively checking him over under the sun of what should have been a perfect afternoon. He... Are you all right? He couldn't believe that he was here, shaken undoubtedly, but whole. Physically. The younger man acknowledged his expression dabbed with worry and tiredness as he sucked in a breath, his composure stalling as their eyes locked. I... I am so sorry. Kitten, no. He breathed, his arms bringing him into an embrace which was eagerly returned. This... None of this should have had anything to do with you or David or the kids. My God, this is all my... No. Fogging the bronzed hero felt his lover pull away. Oh, God. Oh, no. Was this... Could this be the final straw? Did this mean that they were... That's it. I am through with feeling guilty about events and circumstances out of my control, and I am not allowing Shigaraki or anyone else to run what we worked so hard to build. This is not who I am. This is not who we are. And I will have it. Blinking, the one-for-all user watched as the man who held the key to his heart and future took a steadying breath and smoothed those talented, hard-working hands down the golden Hayori he wore, their eyes locking once again. No more blaming ourselves. No more putting our lives on hold because of what might happen, or what is. He huffed. All for one would have gotten out of Tartarus sooner or later. How I did it and went aside. I... 
I am not going to let him take away our peace. He stated firmly. He swore to me, if his word is anything to go by, that he means what he says. That he's made a place for people to go, that he doesn't need to take from anyone else. He furthered, I'm going to choose to think that this is a good outcome. That we can move on from this. That we can get through this together. All right? Feeling his shoulders deflate in relief, his eyes tearing a little, he found he couldn't put what he felt into words, and so his arms opening once more, he pulled his husband close, breathed in the scent of his hair, and sighed. They could do this. It would have been easy. There were untold obstacles ahead, but with Shota by his side, he'd learned something incredibly valuable, hadn't he? Anything was possible. They would make it so. That evening... David, his husband, and himself approached Sorohigo and Marai to agree that they'd enjoy the wedding evening as planned, go for the hike to Shimura Nana's favorite tea, and then calmly relay the news to everyone else before they traveled back to Musutafu on Monday. The meal had been delicious, the conversations carefree. They'd made the most of the peace they had. Then the revelation of their uninvited guest foretold, the ensuing chaos was a little easier to bear. The shock, horror, and anger not as ill-spent as they could finally access the internet and television channels to see Shigaraki, his business suit unchanged and his smile blooming as he showed off images of his new Eden. Hear me, my brothers, sisters, and individuals not confined by gender. The world is cruel. The laws of your countries are designed to cage you, defile you, and mock you by insisting your quirks must be detained, restrained, or locked away unless you play by their rules. Admittedly, the new country looked habitable. The former savage lands were still a lush spread of miles upon miles of tropical flora and fauna, but now it was interspersed with townships made from buildings, dwellings, and shield industries mounted communication hubs, all powered by green energy power stations, which ran off the electricity charged Nomu who dwelled within them. Well, to that I say no more! Why must you hide your gifts? Why not live as you choose? Be how you please, for everyone is welcome here. He also posted the New Eden Mandate across all social media sites for people to read, and, as they'd all thought, this supposed sanctuary was one for the strong and the powerful, because there would be no law enforcement, only protections offered to people who were useful to the running and maintaining of the country itself. Even the quirkless for I have the ability to take and give out our natural gifts. So, if you're brave enough to enter and seek an audience with me, I will grant you what you seek. Or if your quirk plagues you, if you wish to be free of it, you will see no judgment from me, only the removal of your blight. The protected would include scientists, farmers, medical practitioners, cooks, ICT experts, engineers, and construction workers. He'd afford them safety in the form of a personal Nomu guard, an assured plot of land with a homestead, and a position on the council he was building as a kind of advisory board. Everyone else would need to prove their usefulness in order to access and live off the resources. The first exodus to your new home will begin at the times, dates, and locations cited on the banner running across this newscast and all of our social media platforms. And you need not fear anyone trying to stop you for I have already reached an agreement of terms with the Unified Nations. An agreement further detailed when I make a further address this coming Wednesday alongside All Might and Mr. David Shield. But there was no doubt that the vestiges had been right in their earlier assumptions. Shigaraki was not one for sharing, and of course leaving New Eden once you'd arrived there had it been touched on at all. Together... We could show the world how life could be, how life should be. And, although I am contenting myself to this smaller corner of civilization, it is my deepest hope that the acknowledgement of a truly superhuman society can create the kind of progress the likes of which no generation has ever seen. It looked very much as though the Korogiri he'd created were the only way in and out of the ice-protected area, but regardless of those facts, regardless of those dangers, the masses were not deterred. Sadly, news footage from across the world was flooded by images of people packing up their belongings, their families, dear God, and traveling to the rendezvous points. And the police weren't stopping them. In fact, several countries had seen fit to ship off the worst villains crowding their prisons, 
the helpless and hapless inmates loaded into buses wearing shackles amidst the flocks of protesters, either begging for them to stay put or jeering for them to go. Their posters and signs showing murderers and drug dealers getting eaten by dinosaurs. It was just as the old crime lord had foretold. So come one, come all, your new Eden awaits. And only time would tell if he could keep order or not. <laughs>